Well, hi there, everybody. This is Joey here at Underage Packers. It's been a while. It has been a while for the Underage Packers YouTube channel. Man, we got, we got to ease into the off season slowly but surely, and then we can hit the free agency content, the draft content, the mock drafts, all that exciting stuff before we hit the lull uh, in June before training camp. But today, I wanted to talk about a certain position group for the Packers because you know. I was looking around my room yesterday, and I saw this game day program from Week 12 featuring all of the Packers offensive linemen who were featured in the 2021 season. And it got me to thinking, you know, offensive line is probably the only position group on the Packers where you are certain about their future or there, there's not a lot of guessing going on. Sure, there's maybe two or three players in there where you're not sure if they're going to be back next year, but compared to quarterback, wide receiver, defensive back, the offensive line group is pretty much set for next year. So that's why today I wanted to recap all of the moves the Packers have done to get to this point on the offensive line and their stability at this point and kind of just what I think the offensive line uh, group looks like going into the future. So let's start with how did this team get here? Did we have five solid offensive line starters week in and week out? And you know you have a few backups as well that you can slide in there pretty flawlessly. And, you know, the Packers have seemed to be, over the past few decades, uh, very good at drafting quarterbacks and also very good at drafting offensive linemen, whether that's in the first round by, like, Brian Balaga or whether that's in the later rounds, like even day three with David Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins in round two, Corey Lindsley. So they've been really good at drafting offensive linemen, and that has not changed as of recent years. Like I mentioned, Elton Jenkins adding a very versatile offensive lineman, probably the most versatile offensive lineman in the whole entire league. I mean, his main position is offensive guard with the Packers, but he can pretty smoothly trans transition over to any position really, which is such a vital piece, such an important piece to this Packers offense. Uh, unfortunately, Elton did face an injury midway through this year, but you talk about, you know, what you were looking at at the offensive line, which is a unique position when somebody gets hurt. Now with Elton Jenkins, he gives you that ability to really move people all over and then be able to put your best five out there. Like Matt LaFleur says, you know, if your right guard is down, instead of having to put your very bad backup right guard out there who can only play right guard, maybe you have a stronger backup at left guard, or maybe you have your center who can slide over to left guard, and then you move Elton over to center. You know, we've seen that the Packers do that so many times, and that will surely continue um, with Elton Jenkins as long as he's with the team. Uh, and then you also have some other players that the Packers have added that are very versatile. Um, you know, there's been some speculation of if Royce Newman is truly built to play right tackle in the league, but he did play that in college as well. He now plays right guard with the Packers. But, you know, you can look at that and say that's probably another player the Packers were looking at, at possibly playing many different positions amongst the line. And really, just the backups they've added, um, you look at Lucas Patrick, who over the past two seasons has played center, right guard, left guard. He's been all over the interior of the offensive line, so that's great to see. Um, you have Billy Turner, who the Packers signed in free agency two years ago, whose main point is right tackle. Don't move him over to right guard. We saw how bad that went in 2019. But he can play right tackle. He can try to play left tackle. <laughs> you know, it went... Good a few games last year when David Bakhtiari went out with an injury. It was a bad decision to put him out there at left tackle this year because Yash Nyman, backup left tackle for this team, is an absolute beast. And obviously he is a drop-off from the all-pro David Bakhtiari. But man, uh, you know, coming off of the practice squad, being on the practice squad for two or three years, everybody pretty much having no faith in you uh, on the outside thinking, Okay, he's been on the practice squad for so long. Is he ever going to do anything? And then going out there, having to step in for Elton Jenkins at left tackle, and boom, he, he knows what he's doing. 
Of course, it would be a shame if I went a whole video talking about the offensive line and didn't mention now offensive coordinator Adam Sinovich, who was the Packers offensive line coach for the past two years. Man, it is difficult to tell from the outside how much impact an assistant coach or a position coach can have on players, you know. But the way Matt LaFleur talks about them and the results that the offensive line puts on the field it's pretty easy to say that Adam Sinovich knows what he is doing. And it is quite the luxury for the Packers to have unlimited depth at offensive line as it seems. So that's great uh, for Adam. You know, Packers made a good move by promoting him to OC. Hopefully, you know, uh, even under Matt LeFleur's shadow, he can do the job at offense coordinator just as flawlessly as he did as the offensive line coach. But man, Adam Sinovich... Luke Buckkiss, that whole offensive line staff seems to be doing a great job with that group. Now, like I said at the top of this video, it truly seems that offensive line is the one position group for the Packers that is pretty predictable what their start, their future will look like, uh, at least for the, the foreseeable future in the next few years. Uh, you'll look at if I had to give a starting lineup if everybody is healthy, for week one next year, you obviously have David Bakhtiari at left tackle. He still has three years on his mega contract. You have Elton Jenkins, like I said, if everybody's healthy, at left guard. You have the second-year center Josh Myers at center. At right guard, it could be a toss-up between Royce Newman, uh, Ben Braden, John Runyon. A lot of possible names in that mix there. And then at right tackle... Right tackle is the only one where you you have some questions. Billy Turner, it does still have a year on his deal, but just like Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith from the 2019 free agency class, it is expected the Packers will move on from Billy just with the way his contract is structured. And then you also have Dennis Kelly, who was only signed to a one-year deal this summer of 2020. So his contract is coming up. I do think they bring back Dennis Kelly. Uh, Billy Turner went down in a Week 12 game against the Bears this past year, and Dennis Kelly slid in there and played pretty well, uh, considering what he was. Like I said, you know, not being signed until July, sitting on the bench for the whole season, and then coming in there and playing really well at right tackle. So, you know, I, I'd be interested to see if they're, they should be able to afford Dennis Kelly, and I would be very happy with that move. So there you have it. That's what I'd predict the next five or the starting five uh, for next year for the Packers. And that whole left side really is a really, really stable group that you can expect to see out there for the next three, four years, you know, for the Packers, depending on how some contracts work out. But like I said, David has three years left. Josh Myers still has three years left on his rookie contract. And Elton Jenkins, I'd be shocked if the Packers don't pay him next offseason. So that's this is one thing that you got to feel confident about if you're the Packers. You don't know if Aaron Rodgers is coming back, although things seem to be leaning that way uh, this early on in the offseason. You don't know if you're going to be able to afford guys like Devontae Adams, Rasul Douglas, Devondre Campbell. But... You know, there, there, there is a lot of people who think that offensive line is one of the most important groups, one of the most important positions in all of football, and that you should build your team around it. So the Packers have that great foundation there, and uh, hopefully that continues for them. And le next year, we got we to gotta cut down on these injuries for the offensive linemen. You know, it's fine proving that you got depth, but we believe you now. We believe you now, Green Bay, that you got offensive line depth. We don't need to see any more of it. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to kind of talk about that one thing I wanted to throw out there. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow us on all the social medias, and I'll talk to you later. Go Pack Go!